drafted to be even in France? I think it is. Bonjour, à Gerbi, nous parlons de Livre Français. Je m'appelle Connor, and today we are talking about French books, and that was... I'm never going to try and speak French ever again. <laughs> I haven't practiced French in like five years now, so I, that probably isn't even right. I like checked Google Translate to make sure I've seen the right thing, and then I was like, Google Translate isn't even that reliable, so anyway. I also don't even have a rat, but I had this idea of like, oh, Ratatouille's in France, like I'll make a little Ratatouille intro. So I used the guinea pig instead, but anyway, today we're talking about books that I have read recently that were by French authors. Most of them are classics, apart from one, which I will leave at the end because I'll talk about them in the order that I read them, and that was the last one I read. I will say that one of the books on this list is my favourite book of 2021 so far, so you have that to look forward to. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and please subscribe, you know the drill. Definitely also comment any other French books that you think I should read them below because I am definitely on the lookout for more. This was really fun having like a little French TBR and I'm hoping to do the same next month with Russian books so that'll be exciting as well but without any further ado let's just get started talking about the first book. So the first book that I read that was by a French author was Le Grand Mons by Alan Fournier and this was published in 1913 and it was described to me as kind of a coming of age novel and although I don't think that's not what it is I also don't think that is what it is. We are mainly following the narrator's friend who has went to this like country manor for a weekend. He like ran away from the little town and went on an adventure and then he came back and he doesn't know how to get his way back there and he had like the most magical time and he feels like maybe it was even a dream. Like it's very um, much up in the air if he like really experienced this. Or if he is like exaggerating and the other boys in the town are like, you've kind of made this up, like we've never heard of this place. And then I don't think it is a coming of age novel because in my opinion, the characters don't grow up. Like they start the novel as like young teenagers and then they finish the novel. And yes, they may physically be adults, but Mons, who is the friend that the story is kind of about, he actually kind of regresses in a way and is more immature and abandons all of his responsibilities at the end of the book. And that's why I feel like it's hard to really describe what this book actually is. And I don't want to go into any spoilers either, so it's like hard to actually talk about it. But overall, I did enjoy this, but it was my least favourite out of all the books I read. I really like Alan Fournier's writing style and I found like the descriptions and the characters themselves to be really interesting and nice and um, like just well written but the plot was just a little lackluster and like I said it doesn't really make sense as a kind of coming of age novel and I feel like that is just not the right way to describe this. Um, like I said the main character just abandons his duties uh, like as a man and I don't know. I enjoyed this but it wasn't like the best start to my like French TBR. The next book that I read was The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry and this was published in 1943 and it is a children's classic about a little prince who lives on a planet all alone with a rose as like his only friend and his like love and he goes off exploring and he goes to different planets and meets different characters and then he comes down to earth and meets the narrator of the story and they just teach each other some life lessons about friendship and love and looking like deep inside of a person to understand their soul that type of thing, which are all really great messages and I did really enjoy this book. I really thought the pictures as well within the book, so obviously it's a kid's book, were like really cute and colourful and fun and I thought the messages were great and the writing style itself was really engaging. However, I have to say that I read this at like 5am because I couldn't sleep one night and I felt like I didn't really personally take in the messages that well and it probably is just because I read it like at 5am but I didn't really feel like the heartwarming sensation that a lot of people talk about with this book. It didn't really mean as much to me and once I finished it I didn't really think about it whereas I feel like other people would describe reading this and like it really having an impact on them and them really you know remembering the messages of this book and I think the messages were great and the book was good but it just didn't really stick with me personally. So I would definitely recommend this especially to kids and I think that if I was going to seriously like practice my French again and try and improve my skills this would be a good book to read in French because it is quite short, quite simple to read and I've heard that it's quite good for doing that 
But yeah, it didn't really mean as much to me personally as it did to other people, but I can definitely say that I enjoyed it and I appreciate it. The next book that I read was Around the World in 88 Days by Jules Verne, and this was published in 1872, and it's an adventure novel where two of our main characters, one of them is like a pretty rich man and his butler slash servant, I don't know what you would call it, go on an adventure around the world to see if they can complete it on 80 days against a bet that his acquaintances have said it is impossible to do. I thought this was a fun book, okay, and I really liked the plot. I thought it was really engaging and they're actually being pursued by a detective that thinks that our main character is a thief and has stole a lot of money from the Bank of England and that really added like an extra element to it which I thought was fun. I think that when they all went to all the different countries and explored them it was really interesting and the different characters they meet along the way and the different obstacles and hurdles that they have to go through to try and complete the 80 day travel and like complete the bet were all really fun. However, I cannot deny that this book is seriously outdated in many ways. It is very colonialistic, especially the sections that take pl uh, place in India and Hong Kong. They are bordering on being quite offensive. I would say the India part is especially, I would think it is kind of offensive. And the praise of England and like the strong English message of England being like the best and England being superior is really strong in this book which is interesting because it is by a French author but I looked up and apparently Jules Verne went through a phase where he was like really like into England um, so that's interesting and the most problematic aspect overall for me was the scene in the USA where Native Americans attack the train it was just straight up racist like it's not even like I can say it's bordering on offensive or anything it was just straight up offensive and pretty racist and definitely like brings the book down quite a bit when you read it in the modern day. I still think this is a good book and I think that it's well written, the characters are great, the plot is great and I would say still read it but definitely you have to be aware that this is very outdated in a lot of ways and especially that scene with the Native Americans is just like straight up not good. So again I would recommend it but just be aware of these things when going into it. The next book that I read was Nana by Emile Zola and this was published in 1880 and it is about a prostitute who it says online she starts off as a streetwalker and then makes her way up through society. You spend very little time with her as like a poor streetwalker. She starts off the novel already pretty well known and then she loses her fortune and her favour and ends up being back to Streetwalker. However, pretty much straight away again, she makes more connections and reignites some old connections and makes her way up to the top again. And this was my favorite book that I've read so far in 2021. It was just so good. So something that is jarring at the start, I think, is that this is technically book nine in a series, but you obviously don't need to read the books in series. They do stand alone. So there is a lot of characters thrown at you and I think Zola would have assumed that readers at the time would have read previous books and would know these characters. He does not hold your hand at all. Like there's just a lot of characters being introduced like over and over and it's a lot bit overwhelming but you do get a feel pretty soon um, or pretty fast sorry for who the main characters are and their personality and it does make sense. It just you have to stick with it and kind of not let yourself be overwhelmed. Just it's, like accept that there's a lot of characters in this book. The writing style as well is very descriptive and sometimes it feels like it takes a while for things to actually happen and you know he'll start describing an event that's happening and it'll take like two pages for the event to actually happen and at times this is a little bit frustrating but I think that he's just such a good writer that it was okay and I just pushed through it. It didn't like make me want to stop reading it just was like okay <laughs> get to the point you know that type of thing. Nana is such an interesting character. She felt to me almost like a succubus type figure. She just drains and destroys the life and the money and the wallets and the force of all of the men around her. She just takes everything that she wants and she is like the ultimate sugar baby. I would say if this was published like today, rather than her being a prostitute, she would definitely just be like this ultimate sugar baby type character because she just does not have a kid in the world. She is just saying to these men, like, she's not even, like, having sex with them most of the time. She's just like, give me 2,000 francs. What is the money back then? 
I don't know, say euros. She's like, give me 2,000 euros now. And they're like selling their properties, like just to give her money, like just to please her, like just to be in her favor. They are just destroying their lives and their fortunes for her. And she's giving them like very little in return. And it is so fun to read. The last 50 pages of this book are so wild. Like the last 50 pages of this book is what made me just love it so much and made it one of my favorites. It is just so crazy how Nana just like goes like full ultimate sugar baby mode. That's all I can describe it as. It is so fun to read and I highly recommend this book. Obviously it's not for everyone, it's very descriptive, there's a lot of characters, it's kind of hard to get into it first, but once you do get into it, I think this is a great book. I do have to say though, there obviously is um, some content warnings, and the main one is for domestic abuse. Like there is an extremely, extremely terribly abusive relationship at one point in this book between Nana and another character. It doesn't last long, but it is pretty heartbreaking to read and it's definitely something you should be aware of, I think, before going into it, but don't let it put it off you, or don't let it, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Just read this book, it is so good. The final book that I read was Loyalties by Delphine de Vigan, and this was published in 2018, so it was a more recent book, and I also gave this five stars. It's hard to describe what this is about. It was a very, very fast read. I read it in pretty much one sitting, and... The basic premise is that it is about two young boys who are best friends and they both have very messed up family lives. One of them, his parents are divorced and his mother hates his father so much, like will not even acknowledge him. Every single time the boy stays at his dad's house, he comes home and the mum acts like that week of that boy's life doesn't exist. She doesn't ask him about it, she doesn't mention it. He comes in the house and she says, go shower and then doesn't even speak to him and is in a mood with him for like the last few days just because he spent time with his dad. And these boys are like 12 also. And then the other one, his parents are currently in a bit of a situation where they're not speaking because the wife has found out a secret about the husband by going through his computer. And when I heard that, I thought it was gonna be something that's like really bad. And although it's really bad for their relationship, I will say that it's not something that needs a trigger warning or a content warning. So just like, it's not as bad as you probably think it is if you read the book description because I thought it was going to be something much worse. The young boys to deal with this are experimenting with alcohol and they're only 12 and it is obviously having a big impact on their school life and their teacher has noticed that one of them, the one with the divorced parents, is like really struggling and really having a lot of issues. She becomes very invested in trying to discover and what is wrong with him and help him in any way that she can. This book was really heartbreaking and very impactful, I think. It was a very quick read, like I said. I read it in pretty much one sitting and I felt like I became attached to the characters so quickly and I really cared about them and like I knew who they all were, I knew what their struggles were, I knew what they were going through so quickly. Like Delphine de Vigan just really makes you feel for these characters straight away. One thing that I wasn't a big fan of, even though I still gave it five stars, it was the very, very ending. It is so abrupt. Um, and it is left up to interpretation, which is not something that I particularly enjoy. I know a lot of people do like that. I like to know what has happened at the end of a book. And although I didn't enjoy it being left up to interpretation, I do think it left a big impact and it really made me think. And, you know, I had to spend like 10 minutes after reading this book just like sitting, like thinking about the ending and thinking about what happened and just really reflecting in a way. I don't know. It was very impactful, definitely. And I would highly recommend it. The main trigger warning I would say, or content warning, I hate trigger warning, um, content warning would be child abuse. There are some scenes of shocking like physical child abuse, but then also just child neglect. So definitely be aware of that. But I think this was a really impactful book. And like I said, such a fast read. I think it was like 180 pages and I read it in like an hour and a half, um, maybe two hours, I don't really remember. But yeah, definitely check this out and support this author. I definitely want to try some of her books, like another one in the future. So if you enjoyed this video and have found any good recommendations, please let me know in the comments. And also if you have any recommendations for me of other French books, definitely let me know. Obviously there is a lot of like really famous French classics um, that I did not touch on. I feel like I went for some more obscure ones. There are like the really popular ones, but I wanted to go a little bit less mainstream I guess you could say. Also a lot of the really popular French classics are like so thick um, and I am I don't love big books recently I really prefer shorter books so 
that also influenced my decision. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please subscribe, and also definitely let me know any other recommendations, and I will see you in my next video.